Greetings, friends. My name is Pavel Sterma, and now we'll unveil the top news of these days. Ukrainian defenders destroyed a Russian Su-30 fighter in the Black Sea. The downing happened on Wednesday morning. Today, the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine confirmed this information. The fighter that fell into the sea belonged to the 43rd Separate Naval Aviation Regiment of the Russian Air Force, which is based at the airfield of the city of Saki in the temporarily occupied Crimea. The occupiers lost contact with their fighter jet around 5 a.m. Roughly three hours later, the Russians began to search and rescue operation involving the AN-26 aircraft as well as Mi-8 and Ka-27 helicopters. At lunchtime, the invaders reported to the command about a characteristic stain from aviation fuel discovered in the sea, 70 kilometers northwest of Cape Tarhanut. And soon they also saw the wreckage of the destroyed Su-30SM. The cost of such an aircraft is approximately $50 million. As noted, the Su-30 fired four missiles out of six available and then disappeared from the radar screen. It was trying to destroy oil bases in the Black Sea, which Ukrainian special forces had previously returned from Russian occupation. There was confusion in the Russian air units. The use of the F-16 was even cited as a reason of fallen Russian flame, but in fact the new advanced aircraft was shot down by a conventional portable manpad system, which once again confirms the professionalism of Ukrainian military and intelligence. The European Union is working on a proposal to censure Slovakia over the erosion of democratic norms in a move that could result in the bloc with holding funds EM made for Bratislava. As Bloomberg informs, the European Commission has prepared a decision to trigger the procedure over the Prime Minister Robert Fico's decision to abolish the Special Prosecutor's Office that oversaw some corruption cases involving EU funds, according to people familiar with the matter. The process is an initial phase and would require the approval of Commission President Ursula von der Leyen. Commission spokesman Bawash Uyvari said that in an email statement that the executive arm is analyzing the reform to Slovakia's criminal code and that there is currently no decision taken or awaiting political approval with regards to freezing funds. A spokesperson from Slovakia's foreign ministry said in an email statement too that the Commission hasn't formally or informally signaled that it would take such action. About 80% of all public investments in Slovakia are financed by EU funds. Any potential issues with funding would represent a serious blow to this EU and Eurozone member state, which is already facing challenges with excessive deficit in public finances. One of the proposals would see the Commission use of its so-called conditionality mechanism, which allows the EU to freeze funding when it sees its money at risk, to withhold some of their 12.8 billion euros in cohesion funds allocated to Slovakia in the bloc's budget, said the people who spoke on the condition of anonymity. The Commission is also exploring the option of clawing back all or part of the 2.7 billion euros in COVID grants Slovakia has received as part of the EU's pandemic rescue spending one of the people said. The Special Prosecutor's Office was a condition included to receive those funds. Fico has always and openly demonstrated anti-Ukrainian position with clear accents on the Kremlin. While visiting the Holocaust Museum in the Slovak city of Sherad, he stated that there are troops running around Ukraine which have a very clear designation which are connected with movements that they consider dangerous and forbidden today, referring to Nazi movements. Ukrainian soldiers are defending their families, homes and country, as well as the entire Europe and the free world from Russian invaders marked with the letter Z, a symbol of modern Russia fascist aesthetic. Countering Russian aggression for Ukrainians adds to the nation's history of resistance against totalitarian regimes over the last century. Here he Tichy, spokesperson of Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, in the comment on the statement of the Prime Minister of the Slovak Republic. Currently, it is Ukraine that is fighting neo-fascism because Russia has all the signs of this ideology. On our YouTube channel, you can also see a special report about Nazis in the Russian army. The only thing I would like to add is that Moscow was Hitler's main partner until 1941, and Putin has a lot in common with the Führer. What exactly? Watch soon on our channel. Volodymyr Zelensky held a joint meeting with the United States Secretary of State Antony Blinken and the Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs of the UK, David Lammy, 
who came on a visit to Ukraine. President emphasized the importance of this signal, steady and strong support for Ukraine from the leading partners, and commended the personal participation of high-ranking U.S. and U.K. officials in the fourth summit of the International Crimea Platform. The president informed about the situation on the front line and the priority needs of the defense forces. He also stressed that it is important for Ukraine to receive permission to use long-range weapons provided by the United States and other partners as soon as possible. And this topic we'll discuss with Taras Semenyuk, an expert in international relations. Hello and welcome. Welcome you. Hello. Okay. We are glad to see you in our studio. And the first question will be that the fact that Volodymyr Zelensky met with Blinken and Lamy at the same time. What does this indicate at our particular situation right now? Actually, I think it's, uh, it's, it's this is the... the very good sign of unity of, uh, such say, uh, leaders of Anglo-Saxon uh, uh, countries. Uh, and this is the first time that uh, US and Great Britain are in Ukraine with both representatives. So it's the strong sign uh, to Russia, of course, and to allies uh, of Russia that are helping Russia to receive missiles, uh, ballistic missiles, of course. And uh, the strong side is that uh, uh, it's... Um, uh, is the message that Ukraine uh, are not alone and uh, US and Great Britain will support. And the second sign is about Crimea platform that was holding Kyiv in that time. And uh, it means that uh, because all time Russia says that Crimea platform is such kind of uh, uh, not existing, not important even, but now we see that not only US and Great Britain support and participated in the uh, uh, Crimea platform, but also some uh, some leaders from European Union countries participated in this meeting. And it means uh, it mean that uh, Crimea platform is the serious and uh, strategic uh, discussion platform to um, to to, to, to have uh, alive the idea of returning Crimea to Ukraine and uh, also about Crimean Tatars people that um, are also uh, like, uh, like a native people uh, for this country. So uh, it's um, important time for, uh, for science and of course it's about long distance missiles that we are talking a lot and Ukraine is waiting the sign and the confirm from the, um, from the US to give the possibility to use these missiles uh, for long distance um, uh, focus to uh, the focus is the, the military uh, uh, military bases in Russia. So this is the important page for all the participants in the war because it means that um, we are crossing another red line that Putin signed before. So what does it mean? And of course, um, our partners uh, are thinking uh, twice before to give um, the long distance missile for to Ukraine because it means that it could be uh, for his mind it could be some um, the conflict will be uh, the conflict will be have full scale uh, not only in Ukraine but also they doesn't want that NATO will be uh, would be involved to uh, to war in Ukraine. So uh, this kind of pause, uh, this kind of, you know, thinking a lot, uh, it's uh, from US part, but I think we are very close to receive this uh, agreement. And we have actually been waiting for this decision to be announced, for example, by Blinken in Kyiv, and uh, British Prime Minister Keir Starmer and US President Joe Biden will meet this Friday on September 13th. One of the topics will be this decision possible to allow Ukraine to head deep with Storm Shadow and anti missiles into Russian rear. Why is this, this decision taking so long, as earlier Blinken said that Iran has supplied Russia with ballistic missiles? Yeah, maybe uh, this is the second step, because if uh, mm. Iran uh, gave to uh, ballistic missile to Russia, it means that, it means, I think, two messages. Because Russia is not... Uh, uh, can it? Um, Russia has a, a small uh, baggage of um, ballistic missiles, and uh, participating of Iran is the rising uh, assets for the war. And of course, the answer from the U.S. must be in the same way as I see. 
because um, if Iran gives missiles, uh, ballistic missiles to Russia, it means that participating of Iran is open. So it's officially proclaimed. Uh, North Korea, the same situation. Only China is standing apart. Only China is like uh, in, in neutral position. But uh, we know that um, um, important details for missiles uh, China could uh, send to you to to Russia, and because Russia cannot produce by alone in his production uh, missiles for his army, uh, so um, Russia need allies also. And this is the, another uh, step of rising in the war. And I think uh, if we are talking about to respond uh, for Iran's uh, activity with missiles, it means that um, Ukraine receive uh, the same kind of uh, uh, weapon. It's like a, to have a balance. Uh, if we are talking about uh, in military um, frame of view, it means to have a balance in uh, in the weapons. So Russia understand and know that these missiles uh, could be a, a very danger for for a territory. So it could be the last. Uh, I think it could be the last stage of uh, of the conflict because after that, after long distance missiles. Could be uh, the next level is the um, nuclear tactic missile. So uh, what what how it how it happened and what will be the future? It, nobody knows. And what is what will be the answer from Russia? Nobody knows. But I think in that case, giving um, a long distance missiles, uh, storm shadow or attack arms to Ukraine, uh, allies, uh, in U.S. and uh, Great Britain has the answer if. The Russia, Russia will rise them or will use nuclear tactic missiles. So I think uh, this is the this this is the the way of thinking. I think of uh, our allies, and they will never give uh, to Ukraine uh, long distance missiles if they would not know the answer how they will react after if Russia will raise the question. Now I see it's like the final stage of that escalation process before the nuclear one and uh, earlier or Volodymyr... before or or i'm sorry or before the peace mm -hmm. negotiation it could be the yeah. uh, one of the last yeah so that is a, a possible manner so escalating to uh, some point and then uh, the victory plan of ukraine or the peace formula as announced by Vladimir Zelensky. and earlier he said that he would present his plan for ukrainian victory as it is called to President Biden boosts candidates Donald Trump and Kamala Harris, and one of them will take office uh, this autumn already. Why is this important that we are talking about the victory plan of Ukraine, what it means for our West and partners? This is a very good question because we have to understand what they mean about victory, what they know, what they understand if they are talking about victory. We know, Ukrainians know, the victory is understandable for us. It's like to back um, uh, occupied territories uh, under uh, Ukrainian government control. So it means that Russians, uh, Russian troops has leave Ukraine. But our allies could understand victory in another may, um, way of understanding. And, and uh, it could be like freezing the um, war line now in the ge geographical position as we see now in the, in the map. So uh, it's it's a good question, and I do, I have no answer how our allies understanding how what is the victory. I see that Kamala Harris in uh, uh, her uh, presidential program, it's hundred uh, more than hundred pages program. I, I I suggest you to read this program, and uh, in one of the page I saw that uh, Kamala Harris is talking about. Uh, uh, Ukraine, uh, but sovereignty of Ukraine, not about uh, giving back territories, not uh, like uh, territories in 1991 uh, borders, but it's about sovereignty. It, uh, sovereignty is the political uh, use of understanding uh, about uh, the status of the country. It means the country exists. But uh, to back territories from the occupied uh, Russian um, armies, it means we, maybe we need much more time, 
not for now, but maybe for a long distant time. So it's it's a good question. We can we can manipulate, we can see, but I don't know how our allies understand what does it mean victory for him. For us it's understandable, but for allies not. Indeed, that is a very good question for us to understand. What does the victory really look like? And for now, thank you for this very good and insightful interview. It was Taras Semenyuk, expert in international relations. And that concludes our today's video for now. Thank you for watching and joining us. Stay updated, comment, like and subscribe to our UETV English channel for even more news from Ukraine. Because it is your support that matters for us. Goodbye.